it doesn't exactly go into what the spider, the starfish is, it goes into what we represent. One being an organization is centralized. The other being an organization which is decentralized as a starfish. Let me start with a narration, two incidents that happened. A few years ago, our neurosurgeon, the best neuroscientist in the world, cracked the code from how to map the human being. They decided they are going to find out what the structure of the human mind is, which parts control the hierarchy, which parts give the order, the orders of what to do, how to do, and where. So they started putting all sorts of diodes and samples in the human person. All sorts of diodes and on a live person. They started showing a series of images. And they waited for the results to come. The results they got are shocking. They found out there was no central control. The human mind, that's the one they were testing, did not have any control. They then moved on to a female specimen. Okay, that might have been good. The female specimen also did not have any control. The confusion was, the human brain does not have a rigid hierarchy. It does not have a step fast structure. It is simply a network neurons, hundreds of billions of neurons, networking with each other, small little tiny cells communicating with each other. So how does that develop into us, into me, you? How does that make us so intelligent? Simply a bunch of cells, you take them, put them together and they start thinking, oh wow, they can be fully inventive. That is a mystery. That is also the solution to many of us. The spiral represents a top-down approach, a top-down hierarchy. There is a boss, a CEO in an organization. You get rid of the CEO. You cut the spider's head, you get rid of the A starfish, on the other hand, cut a starfish in two, you get two pieces. Cut it more, you get even more. Every part of the starfish's body is a part of the organization. But independent of each other. We do not depend on each other for survival. So how does this organization make decisions? And how can we apply that in us? Well, traditionally the structure of human organizations, companies, empires has been that of the spider, the top of the story. How many of us know why the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991? Was it communism? How many of us know why the global recession happened last year? Was it capitalism? If communism was so faulty that it collapsed the government, and then capitalism became so faulty, then what do we do? The answer is we are looking, we are barking up the wrong tree. It wasn't communism, it wasn't capitalism, it was centralization. The Soviet Union, in the years following of 1991, had gotten so centralized that someone in the far corner of Siberia had to pass a request all the way to Moscow just to have something implemented in his neighborhood. The global recession happened because all the worldwide financial companies conglomerated, got together. There were just four top heavy bankers ruling the entire world financial structure. This is what led. The resultant of it is what we can see today. We are seeing green shoots sort of appear. We are seeing independent organizations to gain the game. The starfish structure can be best exemplified in the internet, the growth of the internet. Who rules the internet? There is no answer. <coughs> Nobody knows who rules the internet. How did that thing come in? There is no ruler, no one to give any order, no one to pass the commands. How did the internet function? Function because the internet deals in a bottom of the code in which every constituent member is actually at the top of the pyramid. Every constituent member makes a decision. The entire decision creates the magic, the wonder that the internet is created. Take a look at Wikipedia. Someone, some scientist somewhere in Europe just thought I had a crazy idea. I just make a small website, right? I let everyone come and edit it. Everyone 
one at that time was material. They said this site is going to be hit by a You will never make something that is What they did not count on was the ingenuity of humans and our Indian humans. For every one vandal that attacks Wikipedia, there are another 10 people who go to work and fix it right there and then. That is the power of Wikipedia. That thing has been extended now to so many other websites. But then you think, this is just on the internet. What about the real world? How do we apply a starfish organization to the real world? Something that depends only on its members, something that honors the members, and something that is not so dependent on the people doing it. Ralph Smitty, in 1924, had this crazy idea. He thought everyone could be a good communicator. So he started this club for two months. And then he grew. Other clubs came up also. The basic thing that makes Toastmasters so effective is that we, the members, help ourselves. We do not rely on any top down structure. We do not rely on people to pass us orders. We are Toastmasters. We are the Toastmasters. This is one of the biggest examples of the starfish movement that is coming in the real world. There are so many other movements like this, and we have to work towards making it more and more effective. We have to work towards bringing in organizations. Already they have started. Organizations are spreading up work, diversifying. They're giving the bottom level employees more and more easily making jobs. This is the benefit of the starfish organization versus the spider. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are standing at a pinnacle. We are going to see a whole new world now, in which the bottom person, the bottom user, me and you, you and me, 